We're gonna go into the four keys behind strength training for basketball, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in getting more explosive, you wanna be a little bit more reactive on the field, maybe you wanna be a little bit more explosive on the court, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you dunk those basketballs. So basketball is one of those sports where a lot of coaches and a lot of athletes still will say, well, maybe you shouldn't be doing that strength training. You know, it's gonna screw up your shot. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna hinder your performance out on the court. It's really not that imperative for you to become a better basketball player. And one of the things behind this is it's, it's similar to soccer and baseball. It's like, why do you still have this thought process? If we can relate back to the late 90s, all throughout the 90s, you can see that the Chicago Bulls who dominated for six world titles were doing Olympic lifts. They were doing highly explosive movements that required a lot of technique. And I was fortunate enough to spend time with Al Vermeil, and I'm also continuously fortunate enough to spend a ton of time with Mike Gatone. These are two strength coaches that worked with the Chicago Bulls. Al was the head strength coach and Mike was his assistant. And one of the big factors that they relate to a lot of their success with Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, BJ Armstrong, all these guys that were absolute animals, were that they were extremely explosive. They would do technical movements in variations, in positions that were gonna help them be more dominant on the court, be more reactive on the court. And that's one of those big stories is that Mike shared a story with me of BJ Armstrong. He was a smaller guy, not super, super talented, but he could power clean 300 pounds. On the regular, he would hit 110K two box power cleans and he could jump higher than anyone even being a shorter basketball player and that helped him dominate from that three-point line. Same with Rodman and even Horace Grant. These were guys that dominated inside the paint. Those were dudes that were constantly smashing big time weight. Horace Grant was known for power cleaning 315 pounds and he's 6'10 and that's one of those big factors here that we've got to analyze is that's a key component. Being able to produce a lot of force very, very rapidly and doing that consistently throughout a game that's gonna help you dominate in the sport, but that's also gonna help you have more longevity in the sport because you're gonna be able to have a decent amount of muscle that's gonna help you stay healthier longer, it's gonna protect your joints, it's gonna prevent injuries from happening. And it's very important to understand that when we're talking about basketball, because we've got guys and women that tend to be so tall so long, we've got to make sure that their joints are more stable. If we can think about kids growing up that tend to be much taller individuals, when they're young, they're walking like baby giraffes. Their coordination's not great. They're all over the place when they're doing unilateral movements. And that's the key factor we've got to remember. When we're dealing with basketball players, they're some of the most explosive athletes on the planet. But because of how tall and long they are, sometimes they struggle with high rates of coordination. So it's really, really important to develop that aspect inside the weight room. So now we're gonna go into those four key factors behind strength training for basketball. That first key factor is going to be mobility. And I know this is a little hokey, right? It's, oh, that's not flashy, but it's key. It's very, very important to recognize that when we're talking about men and women who tend to be taller, they might have very tight ankles. They might have very tight hips. Their lower back might not be as mobile. So if we can focus on mobility as part of their strength training, we're gonna end up seeing that then as that mobility improves, we can get a little bit more aggressive with their strength work. And when we can get a little bit more aggressive with their strength work, they're gonna get a little bit more muscle, okay? So when they have more muscle, they're gonna be more explosive. They're gonna bang a little bit more inside the paint. They're gonna be a little bit stronger. They're gonna be a little bit more intimidating and that's gonna help them with their success on the court. And one of those key factors also, a lot of basketball players have to have really mobile ankles. They have to have really mobile hips. If we can think about Steph Curry or, or even Michael Jordan, when they hit these very specific moves, their ankles have to dorsiflex and plantar flex very, very significantly. And so having mobility through the ankles, through the hips, through the lower back is gonna help lead to better positions when they're trying to hit these very significant moves on the court to take advantage of their opponents. So the more mobile 
our ankles are, our knees, our lower back is, for basketball players, the more we can dominate and the healthier we're gonna be long term. So focus on mobility in the beginning and that's gonna help your strength training get a little bit more aggressive and it's gonna lead to better positions on the court. That number three key factor behind strength training for basketball is we've got to train our basketball players to be explosive in a unilateral and bilateral position. And so this is, a, this is sort of like that secret term, right? It's like, all right, well, how do you develop explosiveness? When we're focusing on developing a basketball player to be explosive in a unilateral position or explosive in a bilateral position, we've got to work on specific strength movements. If we can increase their strength, we're gonna increase their rate of coordination. So if we're doing a single leg squat with dumbbells for a basketball player or even a barbell on the back, we're gonna help them become stronger in that unilateral position. So let's say hypothetically we're doing a single leg squat for five sets of five on each leg with a barbell on their back. Then they can rest for two to three minutes and then we can go hit a unilateral jump, okay? So we might do jump lunges or jump step ups, anything along these lines that's gonna help increase their explosiveness. If we're looking at it from a bilateral position, maybe we're doing goblet squats or we're doing you know, front squats. And this is one of the key factors here is that a lot of basketball players, because of how tall they are, they struggle to get full range of motion. They struggle to get full range of motion depth. So it's okay that if we're gonna do a, let's say a front squat, they could do a bodybuilding front squat to a box, okay? A little bit higher box, so it's just a little bit below 90 degrees until their mobility in their ankles and their hips allows them to get a little bit deeper. But now they can do that strength work, rest two to three minutes, and then do something like stair jumps. Because of their size, they tend to be a little bit heavier, so stair jumps is a great way to increase their explosiveness because when they're grounding during that eccentric grounding position, there's not as much of a load as if they would be doing box jumps or even hurdle hops. Now that's not to say that they can't end up doing hurdle hops, they certainly can. But in the beginning, I would say focus on some unilateral and bilateral strength and then contrast that after they rest two to three minutes with some explosive jumps. You're gonna see a really good improvement in their coordination. And one factor that I've seen, as our athletes, as our basketball players do get more coordinated, as they grow, one unique thing you can do is something like a single leg squat and then superset that where you would sit there and say, hey, rest two to three minutes and do a bilateral jump. And that is when the athlete really learns how to coordinate everything really well. Because now they're triggering that strength component from a unilateral perspective and then they're doing the explosive work from a bilateral movement. One other component here is that if you've got basketball players who tend to be really explosive from one leg, then you can develop the strength from a unilateral perspective, but then develop that jumping ability from a bilateral perspective. They're already well-trained from that unilateral jump, but they might struggle from a bilateral jump. And if you can increase their power output from that bilateral position, that's gonna help them be more versatile. And same for the vice versa. If we're talking about somebody who is more explosive from a bilateral position, you can do some strength work in the bilateral position, but then train them to do some more jumps from a unilateral perspective, because that tends to be their weakness. So you can get pretty creative with this, but that third key factor here is to develop explosiveness for basketball players. That second key factor is developing that dynamic trunk control or DTC. And so this is one of those very important aspects that I bring in from other sports as well. If we're talking about running backs, right? they've gotta have really good dynamic trunk control. If we're talking about high-end sprinters, they have to have dynamic trunk control. You have to be able to control your trunk dynamically at very high speeds. Growing up in the 90s for myself, I would see Michael Jordan just crossing guys over and embarrassing them, looking like he was breaking their ankles. And my dad used to sit down in the basement and scream at the TV, Jordan just made you leave your jock strap on the court. This is actually real stories. He would scream this because Michael Jordan would just embarrass guys with how well he could move. And I oftentimes like to think about this and compare someone like LeBron and Michael Jordan, who are the greatest of all time, to someone like Barry Sanders or Saquon Barkley or any of these great running backs. The way they can move their hips, the way they can move their shoulders, but still control their trunk, that's a key aspect behind how agile they are. So that's one of those key factors is that if you think about watching someone, if they can move quickly forward without collapsing their trunk, right? If they're not collapsing forward, now they have that dynamic trunk control 
and along with that mobility and that explosive unilateral positioning, now they can make those cuts. Now they can use their hand-eye coordination to get people off balance. And when you can get your defender off balance, now you can take advantage of an easier shot. And that's the key factor behind dynamic trunk control is that now you're setting up your opponent to get into a precarious position. When they're in a bad position, you can take advantage of it. You can hit an easier shot. You can have a better pass. You can have an easier lane. And that makes you more dominant on the court. Now, before we get into that number one key factor, a lot of strength coaches struggle with training basketball players. They want to train their basketball players the same way they might train a football player. They might train a basketball player the exact same way they're training a bodybuilder. And the thing is, we can't do that. We've got to look at it and understand, one, what's the sport? Two, what's the goal in the weight room? The goal in the weight room is not to get these guys to back squat 600 pounds. The goal is not to get them to bench press 500 pounds. The goal is to understand the key concepts behind the sport and make it more advantageous for them to develop power, speed, reactiveness, dynamic trunk control. When we can do that as strength coaches, we can make their game better, and that's the whole purpose. We put together Strength Training for Basketball. It's a 12-week program solely designed to help basketball players improve their game. It's not about them hitting these huge numbers in the weight room. It's about improving their sports performance on the court and that takes us into that number one key concept and that's gonna be reactiveness. Some people might say, well, what's the difference between being reactive and being explosive? If you can think about reactiveness as reacting to what your opponent is doing, if you're trying to set your opponent up and they do break their ankles one way or the other, or they do leave their jock strap there, you can react quickly, okay? You can see what's happening and respond to that back up, maybe take that easy shot, back up, maybe hit that, that pass through that open lane now. Or let's say you're going up for the boards, you're, you're trying to block somebody, they get, a, they get the shot off, ball bounces off the rim, you have to ground and react to get back up and react quickly. So that's that key concept with reactiveness is that it's all about responding to the game. Explosiveness is gonna be when you're standing there and all of a sudden you can go as quickly as possible. That reactiveness is gonna be more based off of your opponent. And one of those key factors that I think a lot of basketball coaches and basketball strength coaches miss is that this reactiveness reminds me of somebody like Jordan Burroughs who's trying to scramble, take a shot out on the mat. It's, you're gonna be in a unilateral position almost all of the time and you have to react as quickly as possible because there's a small window to take advantage of what your opponent might have done. So when we're doing this, how can we have auditory cues for the athlete to react? How can we teach them how to do certain things in a unilateral jump series that then leads to a bilateral jump and then back to a unilateral jump so that they can respond and react quickly? How can we do unilateral reflexive work in the weight room so that it leads to more power output when they're in that unilateral position so that they develop proper reactiveness. And if we can think about this, you get somebody who's six, 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 seven, and now all of a sudden you're developing their mobility. You're treating and increasing their strength and explosiveness in a unilateral and bilateral position. Then you start to get their dynamic trunk control to enhance and improve over time. They start to have more awareness of their gut they start to see how their ab work actually transfers over onto the court. And then finally, they become extremely reactive. They start to control their opponent. They start to control the defender. And it's almost like a video game. You know what steps you need to take to get your defender to do specific things. So if I'm gonna set up my defender, and I know that if I make these two or three steps to get them off balance, I can back up and hit something, whatever it is I'm looking for in that specific play. You put these four key factors together and you will dominate on the court. So if you want help with your strength training for basketball, head over to garagestrength.com. You can click on the link down below. You can pick up our 12 week strength training for basketball strength program. If you want more content around basketball based training, click on this card right here. Until next time guys, peace.